Hello everyone and welcome back to Psyched! Today we're going to talk about Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging, or fMRI. In our Methods 101 video on MRI scanners, we have shown that these overpriced cameras can make really cool images of your brain. But we live in the 21st century, so some black and white pictures don't sell very well. They could use a splash of paint. Using a functional MRI scan, active regions of the brain can be identified, yielding some fancy pictures. So how does it work? Well, let's start with a quick recap. When an MRI creates a picture of the brain, it looks at spinning hydrogen protons. In the magnetic field, these protons spin aligned with the magnetic field. A radio frequency pulse is then used to measure the net magnetization, resulting in an image where differences in brightness reflect differences in hydrogen density. Ok cool, but how does this help us to see if neurons within a region are active? Well, if you have ever done a large amount of exercise, you will recognize that you often feel hungry afterwards. Our neurons are just like us. If they were active, they need energy, and they take energy in the form of glucose and oxygen. And it is oxygen that has some properties that can really help us out here. When an area is active, it uses the oxygen, resulting in more blood without oxygen. In other words, it contains deoxygenated hemoglobin. Some seconds later, our brain replenishes those exhausted neurons with a bunch of new oxygen. In other words, oxygenated hemoglobin. Just to be sure, the brain receives more oxygen than it actually needs. Better safe than sorry. It is this replenishing of oxygen after neurons were active that can be measured with fMRI. And therefore, this signal is referred to as the blood oxygenation level dependent response, or in short, bold response. So, how does an MRI scanner measure this functional signal? Well, oxygenated hemoglobin has diamagnetic properties, meaning that it's slightly repelled by the magnetic field. On the other hand, deoxygenated blood has paramagnetic properties, meaning that it is slightly attracted by a magnetic field. Paramagnetic substances distort close bite protons and as such reduce the decay time of the transverse magnetization. Or summarized more simply, whether the blood in your brain is full of oxygen or not will have an effect on how it will react to the magnetic field in the MRI. And remember, when neurons were active, oxygenated blood travels towards the neuron. And since the brain is so kind to send more than enough oxygenated blood, we can actually pick up this signal. And that means we can measure the difference between when oxygen is used and when it is restored. Oxygenated regions will light up more brightly than deoxygenated regions. The only thing that remains to do is to give these brighter spots a nice color. And voila, we got ourselves a vibrant picture of brain activity. But can we actually say brain activity? Because in the end we are measuring the oxygen level, not neural activity. Well, indeed, energy consumption in the brain is also related to maintaining resting membrane potentials, as well as other non-signal related maintenance activity. Furthermore, when we say brain activity, we could mean different aspects, such as action potential firing or postsynaptic activity. The bold response has been linked to both aspects of neural activity. So when interpreting fMRI results, we have to keep in mind that the bold response is an indirect measure of brain activity. Therefore, strictly speaking, the term oxygen consumption would be more accurate. Then again, that does sound a little less cool. So I hope you had fun, I hope you learned something, don't forget to subscribe, and I hope to see you the next time. Bye bye!